Uh, the talk will be about AI, basically what it is. You hear that very often AI, machine learning, deep learning. I will try to talk a little bit about it and what are the differences between these different technologies, how to use it correctly, and where people are using AI, where we can in the industry use it. And after that, I will talk about uh, the way that we use AI in the ventures. Uh, please feel free to stop me if you have any questions anytime. This is supposed to be an interactive discussion, not just I talk for the whole uh, for the five minutes right now. Uh, I'm Lenny, I uh, love my background. I did my undergrad from 2003 in computer engineering. I got excited about AI in 2001, 2002, when I did the AI course and then the that course. Later, we started in the startup, uh, the first AI I had a lot to start in the world, probably. We developed different products in AI and robotics there. Around 2006, I finished my master on developing uh, hardware friendly AI algorithms. After that, I moved to the US to do my PhD at the University uh, in computational physics. After that, I got back to my roots. I joined Sandisk as a senior data scientist for a couple of years. And after that, I moved to BCG uh, to be a senior data scientist at Gamma. Uh, around four months, five months back, I moved internally to DB. As a senior that's thank you for that. Why AI now? Um, basically, three components came together around 2007, 2008 ish, uh, and that made uh, basically AI move from hype mostly to reality. Those three components are exponential increase in com uh, computing power. Basically, around the 1950s, first computers were uh, built, and from the 1980s, more slow came out and slowly that uh, we had an exponential increase in computational power until around uh, early 2000 GPUs came to the picture. And from 2007 to 2008, uh, we find that power processing using GPUs were very popular. And later, uh, the first uh, deep learning uh, models were used by using GPUs were uh, trained. And that was putting a huge amount of computational power among, uh, in researchers' hands. At the same time, we had explosion of data. From the early 90s, when uh, the web uh, was starting, there were a huge amount of data were generated put them on the web. Later, a smartphone came out. Later, embedded systems and IoT came. And there are tremendous amount of data which are generated every day. And that's another component uh, which is very effective for AI. And also the algorithmic advancement. Algorithmic advancement were starting probably many centuries ago. And it was getting, uh, like, there were a lot of new uh, algorithms in mass, and statistics, and later in computer science that they were developing. Until around 2000, basically, nine, the first uh, deep learning uh, methods were trained by the GPUs. And around 2011, IBM Watson uh, beats uh, Joe Faraday. And around 2012, deep learning systems with image, image classification contents, which was a, a big race. Before 2012, for all of those competitions, traditional methods were deep learning. And it was a turning point for using uh, deep learning uh, instead of the traditional methods for uh, image classification and uh, image recognition. And in 2014, Facebook uh, demonstrated the power of the deep learning of FaceNet basically to uh, distinguish, uh, to recognize people's face. 2016, Google's uh, Alpha 2015, 2016. Their alpha goal uh, beats the league, settled the Google World Champion, basically. And all of this together basically brought us today to here where AI is in all aspects of our lives. The still, actually, this is the beginning. We will have more and more, but you can see it everywhere. But what is AI? AI, machine learning, deep learning. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning, and machine learning is a subset of AI. This is a very generally accepted uh, concept among people. Uh, AI is basically the ability of a machine to perform different cognitive functions, like learning, uh, reasoning, perceiving, and interacting with the environment. What makes sometimes that AI is not necessarily machine learning. I will explain what are machine learning and deep learning a bit further, but let me give you a couple of examples of where AI is not necessarily machine learning. For example, when you have an OCR, of the character recognition, to do a better recognition, we need to de-skew the uh, documents. For example, we have a document which is skewed, and you need to de-skew. It's an intelligent work by a human being when you rotate it. 
and they're really much easier. But when it's happening with machine, it doesn't need necessarily any learning. We do a lot of statistical models and image processing, and based on that, you might do an ES3, which is an uh, intelligent act, but it's not machine learning. Or using knowledge-based systems, based on the like, case-based reasoning. Based on the historical cases, whatever is similar to that, you reason to do the same thing. These are AI, not necessarily machine learning. Around the 80s, basically machine learning came to the picture, and from early 2000s, it got picked up, and from 2010, deep learning was more and more used, mostly in uh, image processing and computer vision, and, or also NLP. But probably seven or eight out of 10 uh, applications of deep learning are in, machine, in uh, computer vision. Let's see what is machine learning. Basically, machine learning is, uh, machine learning are algorithms where you can learn from examples and generalize and uh, to perform, actually they can learn from examples to generalize for future. You have historical examples giving label data to a set of algorithms and based on that it's going to tell you what's going to happen later. I'll show an example on the next slide. But let me first explain different, uh, like where machine learning is happening in analysis. Probably all of us are familiar with different analytics every day, around 15, 20, 30 years back, and then we were out there. And there are different levels of analytics. Descriptive analytics, which you probably need the lowest level of computational power and data, and in terms of algorithmic complexity, it's very simple. Where you see, uh, generally, for doing the uh, business dashboards, or BIs, and all of these are very simple, what is happening right now. It shows you or what happened before. There's no necessarily any machine learning. People are all data science or whatever for this, but in reality, we don't see any machine learning here usually. There is another level of uh, analysis, which is diagnostic analytics, where you try to look why something happens based on the data. And try to find out what are the driving factors. Root cause analysis is one of the examples for that. The next level would be predictive analytics, where machine learning comes with a picture. Here, uh, basically, based on the past examples, data that we have, we try to predict the future. Demand forecast, for example, or a stock market forecasting, what's happening uh, for the price of stocks tomorrow or next week. And the next level would be prescriptive analytics, where we have a predictive model right now. How we are going to decide what to do next. And if you want to do that, we need a simulation-based model, which uh, basically, you are combining different predictive models and simulation at the same time to test different inputs to get the, uh, the uh, desired outcome, basically. And the, the last level would be will be cognitive analytics, where all of these, like learning, taking action, decision making, all of them are, are happening at the same time. What does that mean? For example, you guys probably use different ride sharing apps. They are pricing it based on your history, based on quantity, and how it was right now what's happening out there, and based on the cost. All of these are happening at the same time. This system, there's nobody behind the app to, uh, to put the price. It, this is learning every day. How to basically put the price there without any human beings uh, interaction. That's the highest level of basically uh, analytics or using machine learning for cognitive analytics. You would need the highest level of computational power and data, like the big data here you would need, and also the, in terms of algorithm complexity, there are many algorithms that will uh, go get, get together to have uh, these kind of systems. Uh, what are the major machine learning methods, basically? There are three types of uh, machine learning methods out there. Supervised learning is, or regression classification you hear, uh, are the most popular and the most used uh, algorithms out there. What do they do? You usually have labeled data. For example, you have thousands of pictures of human beings, male, female, and you have them labeled. These are male pictures or female pictures. You want to give it to a, 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 a system algorithm to distinguish that from it. Learn from that, and next, when you are going to give another picture, which is female, for example, here, it automatically can tell you this is a female picture. Or if it's a male picture, which is not labeled, it can tell you this is a male picture. 
the label data basically is when we have data with a, like a clear uh, tag on that, which says this image, for example, is a man's picture. This image is a woman's picture. That's the tag or label or and whatever you guys like to call it. The next uh, thing is like unsupervised learning or uh, generally the statistical learning they call, uh, they call it then, uh, density estimate or clustering, where you usually don't have label data. You have thousands of images, you want to classify them. You have millions of data, like uh, variables from different customers that you have, and you want to see if there is any emerging pattern or not. Generally, these methods help you to do some exploration. In the earliest stage of analysis, it would be helpful, but usually you need to later do some, uh, some uh, classification or clustering on that. Uh, the, the last one is the reinforcement learning. Where here, it's a very different concept. Basically, you need to define uh, an environment where there is an agent. And this agent, this agent is not a human being, this is a system, which is going to interact with the environment. And based on the actions they are taking, they will get rewarded or punished, and they will change the, their states. Let me give you an example. For example, in uh, a stock trade or option trade, when uh, an agent or a robot is going to do the trade, it will get punished based on the long-term gain it has, or, or get rewarded based on that, not based on every day-to-day -day, uh, actions it takes. And that way, with multiple repeating, it learns and get it has a memory to learn for the future to do a better job. It's very popular among uh, for robotics and also in dynamic pricing or portfolio management. A lot of people use this, list. but fairly it's in more research state compared to uh, compared to supervised learning. Okay, let's get to the deep learning. What's the difference between deep learning and other techniques of machine learning? Generally, in traditional machine learning, there is a poor data scientist or uh, machine learning engineer who is doing the feature extraction. You give the input, the system will like here, they will try to extract information, like if it's about a human being, how what is this height, is length, weight, age, data first, a lot of things. We, we might extract those as features and give it to our uh, machine learning algorithm. And then based on that, we are making it easy for the machine learning algorithm to do, the, do its job. Uh, an example of this would be when you were probably five, six years old, when you started to learn how to read alphabets. When you were seeing two line crosses, you were extracting features. One line, two line, were crossed, it's X. If it's one line and another line next to it, it's L problem. You are extracting features in there, but later it grows, when you grow, then you learn holistically that you see L, X, you did, well, this is L, this is X, very easy. Or even later you learn to read a word without reading the whole word. By the first or second character that you see, you understand which word is that. And you connect it with different things in your mind. It's basically extracting the feature to make it easier for the system to do, the, uh, to do its job. In deep learning, what's happening is basically you add another system or another, another few layers of uh, neural network to do the feature extraction automatically. But this doesn't come for free. This basically, when you add these, you need a lot of weights to be trained. You need a lot more of variables to be trained based on the data. Uh, this, to train these weights, or to get those weights, you need more and more samples. You need a larger training data, which has label, to come up with the right values. Imagine that you have, you are probably a lot of you guys did uh, regression, or uh, uh, yeah, in regression that you want to do, you want you try to fit one line over different points. And uh, when you have like a linear regression, you have two variables. How many is the three data points? But if you want to do nonlinear, you need more and more data points to have a more accurate nonlinear model. Here is like that. Uh, but the, the good thing is that generally it works much better than this approach if you have a huge amount of data and computational power to do the training. Uh, let me give you uh, one of the, probably the, the main application of deep learning is in computer vision. 
and the main tool to do that is convolution learning tool. Generally, uh, the problem is that the image in image processing that you have to extract the features again manually. But here, you put many layers of uh, basically uh, weights or filters which are extracting the edges or different features from the image until it gets to the classification and distinguish the image if it is going to be uh, basically if the person, what kind of emotions the person has. Happiness, sadness, or different kind of emotions. Okay, uh, what are the frontiers of AI right now? Basically, there are the different things in research these days about video understanding and action uh, detection or classification. Basically, we want to see what are the harmful actions involved. We have cameras in the streets and we want to see if the person is acting like a terrorist or whatever. Or in a store and we want to see if the person is doing the shoplifting or not. There are applications of that. The other part is the natural language processing. There are some aspects which are today people are working on as poetry to make a machine to write poems for you or for your love poems or whatever. And sarcasm. To understand sarcasm, identifying uh, sarcasm, and also uh, generating jokes. Uh, another thing is having long and meaningful conversations with chatbots. Most of the chatbots today they are they can only understand the first or second sentence. When it goes beyond that, they don't have an understanding. They might store some information to reuse it later, but there, are, there is not really an intelligence, much intelligence behind it. And robotics is uh, another aspect, uh, another area which people are working on mobile robots here, and how to uh, basically the control systems, especially for the mobile robot, or autonomous uh, underwater vehicles and flying robot, drones that you see. The control systems for them are very complex and they are using. Uh, machine learning for that. Let's get to the application of AI in different industry verticals. Uh, AI application in healthcare, there are like a variety of applications, but here I'm showing five of them. Uh, developing personalized treatment plans based on historical information that we have about other uh, patients and the reactions that the body has at different stage of uh, uh, different stage of uh, the cancer or other uh, issues that they had in birth. And based on that, we are going to develop a personalized plan for that treatment plan. The other side is about medical image analysis. And we have MRI, X ray, fMRI images. Generally, machines or machine learning are going to work better than human beings or doctors uh, to detect uh, issues. Mental health is a like, broad term here, but there are aspects that people are building the chatbots or trying to, uh, to help people with mental health. But if you're stressed out, you have issues to go and use those apps, get connected, get some advices. And also, there are uh, people working on identifying if there is any risk of mental issues for people based on their social media activities or based on their activities as their uh, participants. Uh, the other thing is telehealth or monitoring people, people's health, and using different sensory systems and big machinery on that. Like right now, we are working on a project here to do the health monitoring of cancer patients uh, after discharge using different sensors and machine learning. The uh, fifth application of uh, AI in, in uh, healthcare is drugs to identify drugs which are going to be used for cancer or other uh, major diseases. Uh, AI application in retail is, well, the, one of them is the dynamic and real time pricing. Basically, you will get the price every day, you will get the price like when you are using airlines, you get the ticket every day, you will get the price. And generally, it's going out to states as you get closer to your flight date. Uh, studying and fashion design, there are like companies right now designing fashions based on your taste. And designing like t shirts uh, based on your sort of like multiple t shirts that you have or purchase, based on that, it's going to be designed for you and your t shirt, so basically, uh, which is very personalized for people. For companies which are helping people to find the best fashion for Customer experience have, is basically having a recommendation engine for people to cross sell, upsell to the customer or to calculate evidence to offer them different services. Emotion detection is another uh, area which, based on people's uh, facial, uh, based on their faces in the store, 
for basis of voice over customer services, they can detect the emotions and users based on that. Uh, actually, we we had a venture, general venture, which Lloyd and the team were working on that. They were uh, trying to build and catch up and detect people's emotions versus their voice for customer service applications. Uh, another very important uh, use case for AI that in retail is demand and inventory uh, forecast, trying to see how many of these stuff we're going to buy in the near future or in the next few months. And uh, based on that, uh, uh, predicts their inventory and demand. In energy and utilities, there are pricing, another thing based on the uh, Based on demand and based on how much energy is available, or eventually they are going to do the pricing. It's basically the same concept for different industries. Uh, asset management is uh, for different uh, other assets. The intelligent distribution is about when you are going to distribute the energy. In some places, you are going to predict the demand based on that doing the distribution. Rather than having like energy distributed equally in different places, you will do that based on the needs and the different situation versus the weather uh, for people. And demand forecast is another similar thing for different industries. Predictive maintenance, in a lot of cases, the different hardware might fail. And here they, they try to predict and prevent uh, basically any uh, issue by happening. Anything? In financial service, uh, it's been there for a long time. Uh, portfolio management, uh, we have to tell you, very, uh, are the areas where a lot of AI methods are used. In fraud detection, fraud prevention, people are using that also. It's getting more, much more sophisticated these days. In insurance, as we, uh, it's another area which, based on that, you guys are going to how much you're going to pay or estimating uh, the, uh, basically. This person is going to have accident or not. This kind of thing they can do in insurance. For the credit assessment and the score rating is another thing. Prashant is working on another project in the credit assessment for uh, in DB. Uh, this is another uh, venture that we worked. Actually, Vasily was working. I didn't work on that. And Sydney mostly people worked on that. The problem here is basically identifying uh, the main, uh, the most important information in the and they, they build a uh, concept around that that you were giving a document and there were like, a lot of like, information in the document but we wanted to extract the, the most important document, the, the most important information especially in the financial documents and bills they wanted to extract the right information uh, rather than having all the document to be uh, to use the OCR cover text. Thank you. If there is any more questions, I will be happy to answer.